What is up guys? Welcome to the channel and today we are going to go over a comprehensive world buffs guide. With the release of ZG, with the re-release of layering, and with the growing animosity between factions, seeing a lot of people having all of their fun just dispelling buffs, it is important to go over exactly the best way to get all of your buffs, have as much uptime on keeping them as you get into the raid, and also the least amount of chances of getting them dispelled. So today, we are going to go over a precise world buffs guide. And this is pretty much the definitive world buffs guide for all of World of Warcraft Classic. The only thing that's going to change possibly is the AQ buff from the turn in when that comes out, and when it does, I'll cover that as well. That being said, my name is Sarth, and let's get right into it. Before you get your roll buffs, there's a few things you want to make sure that you do. And the main things are to check the timers of your roll buffs. Now, layering was just reintroduced, and that adds the complication of making sure that you're on the right layer for a roll buff drop. There is a 30 minute cooldown of you being able to swap layers. If you're on the wrong layer and you're trying to save buffs on one character, you should know that your layer is actually account wide, so you can get somebody to invite your alt to the right layer, wait for it to phase, and then you can log on to your main as the buff is going to go out. But there's an important add-on that pretty much everybody should have at this point, and that is called Nova World Buffs. And it'll actually tell you what layer you're on, it'll tell you the timers of the buffs on that layer, and you can also type slash WB with this add-on and it'll tell you both of the layers and their CDs for buffs and you can also check your own buffs on all of your characters. This is a really good way of seeing your cooldowns and how much time you have left on all of your world buffs. So keep this add-on in mind and keep layering in mind as we move forward. As I mentioned in the beginning, people of both factions are leveling priests and shamans to level 20 and beyond just so that they can dispel and purge world buffs. So we're seeing griefers being stationed at pretty much all of the world buff locations around the world and that's the reason why we're going to choose the specific order of getting the world buffs that we will today. If this wasn't an issue whatsoever we would do things a little bit differently but this is what we're going to do. So here on the screen in one of these locations I'm going to post the exact order of the world buffs that we're going to get and if you just wanted to know which order to get your world buffs in you can do that right here and just follow that. I'm going to go over exactly why we're going to get these buffs in that order as well, so stick around for the actual explanations. Let's go. So the first buff we're going to get is actually the new one, the Spirit of the Zandalar. And this one gives you 15% to all stats and 10% movement speed. The 15% buff from this actually is applied after other buffs, so if you take other consumables and buffs, you'll actually get 15% on top of those as well. This buff is acquired from someone turning in the Heart of Hakkar. They can turn it in on this island up here where all of the other Xanilar turn-ins are. But you can also get this buff if you're in Booty Bay. The thing about being in Booty Bay or on this island is that they're both contested territory. So you could run into the other faction and they could easily kill you or dispel your other world buffs. So that's one of the reasons why we're getting this one first. And another reason is because this buff has no CD. There's no internal CD. Onyxia buff, 6 hours, Nef buff, 8 hours, like, this buff has no internal CD. It can be dropped over and over and over again. So if you die after getting this buff and lose it and have to get your world buffs again, you're not completely scuffing yourself. I do want to quickly mention that you can hide in different places in Booty Bay in case you accidentally get the other buffs first or you just choose to get the other buffs first because you don't want to get them dispelled or you don't want to die. You don't want to set your hearth here because there's going to be priests of the other faction just waiting dead in the inn for people to hearth here with like dire mall buffs or songflower and you're just going to get insta dispelled. You're going to want a mage in your group basically for all of these world buffs. So right after getting the Spirit of the Xandalari buff, you're going to want to take your portal. You're going to portal to either Thunderbluff as Horde or to Darnassus as Alliance. Head straight on to Fairless and we're going to get our Dire Maul buffs. Now there is inherently a little bit of danger getting the Dire Maul buffs. Basically running to Dire Maul, there's usually some people of the other faction or right outside of Dire Maul if you're not getting summoned there. But this is the main buff that we're kind of running to and it's probably the scariest one to get but that's why the only one that you have before this is the Spirit of the Zandalar so you're not too worried. 
After getting your Dire Maul buffs, you're going to either Hearth to Orgrimmar or Port to Darnassus. Next up, heading straight to Fairless to get your Songflower. Now on my server, there are opposing faction priests waiting on almost every Songflower with the timer just waiting for people to get there, they're logging in at the timer, and then dispelling people's buffs. So watch out for this, don't go after the main Songflowers. A lot of times it's scarier to go after the Flight Path Songflower than to go after another one. As Horde or Alliance, you could actually fly into Ashenvale and then run up into Felwood and get one of the bottom Songflowers. Luckily, there is layering now in effect, so there aren't as many priests watching as many of the Songflowers as possible, so you do have a lot more chances of things being safe. Always be cautious though, because if you get a timer, it might be on the other layer. Now I'm going to post all of the Songflower locations on the screen. You should make sure that you have the right timer and you're on the right layer for that timer before going after this buff. Sometimes you can get summoned here, but a lot of times you can just run here. It's not going to waste a lot of your time on your buffs. One thing that will waste your time is if you log in to get a Songflower and you're on the wrong layer. So just make sure you're on the right layer of the Songflower with the right CD. Be aware, if you're going to buy or get a group for DM buff, it may layer you, so you could still be on cooldown for layering back when you're looking for a Songflower. After getting Songflower, there can be a little bit of a variance in what you're going to get next. And this is because it can be Darkmoon Fair Week. If it is Darkmoon Fair Week, I would suggest going after that right after your Songflower. Not right before the Songflower, even though you're going to probably lose some time on it. I suggest going after Darkmoon Fair buff after you get your Songflower, because if you die, waiting to try to get your Songflower, and you have just gotten Darkmoon Fair buff, you're going to have to wait 4 hours time in game on that character before you can even get the buff again. So I suggest getting the Darkmoon Fair buff after the Songflower, and that means you're either porting to Thunderbluff or hearthing to Stormwind. Even if the Darkmoon Fair is at the opposing faction that month, I would still suggest getting it in this order. And what you're going to want to do here is to get a summon there, and usually you'll go there with your entire guild pretty much, make sure everything's safe, and then grab your buff. While you're getting the buff, have a mage already casting a portal so that you could head to Stormwind or Orgrimmar so you can get your dragon buffs. Next, you're going to get your Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer. For Rallying Cry of the Dragon Slayer and for Horde, War Chief's Blessing, some of the Alliance are going to get it too, so for these guys, you want to make sure that you know which layer you're on and you're on the correct layer of the buff being dropped. There are websites and actual Discord channels for people claiming that they're going to drop the buff on cooldown so you can know when to log in. Onyxia is on a 6 hour cooldown and Neph is on an 8 hour cooldown. War Chief's Blessing is on a 3 hour cooldown and it's important for everybody to know that Ren's head that sits on a spike next to Thrall will actually despawn about an hour before the actual cooldown is up. Now you have pretty much all of your world buffs and there's only one thing left to do and that's pretty much to make it to the raid safely. If you have your hearth to Kargath or Morgan's Vigil that's a way of instantly getting dispelled. But there's also one more world buff that you can get, and it's very important actually for Molten Core and Blackwing Lair. It won't be as useful later, but for now it's easy to get. And that is the Uber's buff. If you have a priest or engineering with a mind control cap, you can get a buff from Uber's that gives you 83 fire resistance. And this is actually massive in Blackwing Lair, especially for fights like Fire Maw or Veilstraz if you're a caster, and it's also huge in Molten Core. I get this buff every week, so I will get a group together to summon people over to Ubers. What you have to do before you start summoning is actually clear the first level of the Ubers instance, and you have to find a Scar Shield Spellbinder. But you're gonna wanna make sure that you find the level 55 Spellbinder. There's only one per instance ID, and you don't wanna kill him or else you're gonna have to reset it. If you mind control a level 54 Spellbinder, the fire resistance buff is just slightly less than 83. It's not really a big deal, but I always go for a level 55 spellbinder. Now you can start summoning people. There's two ideal trains of thought here, because there's usually still going to be some alliance or horde priests waiting to dispel people's world buffs. 
You can summon people directly into the instance so that when they click their summon, as fast as their computer can load, they will instantly load and load into the instance. So they won't like be disoriented from being summoned and not know where to run and it'll give people an extra second to dispel them. You can also go all the way behind the instance entrance and I'll actually show you how to do this really quickly, and you can go back here and summon from here. It's usually a lot less contended, but also be aware that most guilds do still know about this spot. Go inside, get your Ubers buff, and then you're gonna wanna actually log out in your own instance of Ubers. So what you do is leave the group before exiting the dungeon, zone out, and zone back in. Make sure that you have your own instance ID, so check if there's anyone else in there, you're in a reset instance, and then you can log out. You'll just come back in whenever you decide that it's raid time and you'll be already in your own Ubers instance, literally down the hallway from Blackwing Lair. You're gonna still want some scouts making sure that the hallway is clear, but you pretty much have made it. I should quickly mention that as you're getting summoned places or ported and you're going after certain world buffs, if you have any of the dispellable ones like Dire Maul or Songflower, you're gonna wanna actually put as many ghetto buffs on yourself as possible because those magic ones are dispellable. So no matter what buffs your class has, try to stack as many of them on yourself as possible. In case a priest or a shaman does get that chance to dispel or purge you, you hopefully will lose those other buffs. Also, scrolls actually count as magic buffs as well. So you can go to your auction house, buy as many scrolls as you want, and just buff yourself with all of those. And usually those will get dispelled before anything else. And that's it. That's world buffs. That's every world buff that you're going to be going after in phase 4 and pretty much for the rest of classic. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if I left anything out because I tend to do that quite often, let's be honest. I think everybody kind of zones out on something while they're recording. And also, I just want to wish you guys good luck out there. And if you have any questions, you can check me out on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Once again, my name is Sarth, and this has been the definitive world buffs guide for World of Warcraft Classic. Thank you guys for tuning in, and good luck out there. Re 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 re. The puppy puppy puppy. It's a puppy 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 time. Welcome to the puppy puppy time.